Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the basic anatomy of the vertebrae. And to do that, we're really going to be mainly looking at this lumbar vertebra. So of course, there are three major sections of individual vertebrae. Those are the cervical regions up top, of which there are seven. And there's 12 thoracic vertebra beneath that and five lumbar vertebra underneath that. Now we're going to be talking about the sacrum and coccyx in a separate video. Uh, those are actually fused vertebra, so we're not going to include those here. However, we're mainly going to look at the lumbar vertebra here because this, the basic features that all the vertebra have for the most part are going to be visible here. And then any differences that are notable, we'll actually look at the other ones which I actually have pulled up on the windows here. All right. So here's our lumbar vertebra. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what is anterior and what is posterior. Now I'm going to switch the view like this because we can actually see it much better. This large rounded area, it's actually larger in the lumbar region of the spine. However, this region right here is called the body. Now the body is going to be the part of the vertebra that's going to be supporting all the vertebra above it. So it's going to be the big bearer of weight. If we turn it like this, we can see that especially in the lumbar area, the vertebral bodies are going to be very thick, very large, and very round. And so you can see this part is very solid. So this is our vertebral body. It's going to be the largest in the lumbar vertebra. If we switch very quickly and look at the thoracic vertebra, okay, the body is going to be a little bit smaller. Now this is actually zoomed in quite a bit more. You can actually zoom out a little bit here on the thoracic vertebra. But the thoracic vertebra, as shown right here, are going to have a slightly smaller body. And then going to the cervical one, you can actually see the body right here. This is actually the C3 vertebra. Uh, it has the smallest. And so what we can say, a general trend, is that as you go down the vertebral column, the bodies are going to get larger and larger. And that makes sense because they're supporting more and more weight collectively. So this lumbar vertebra, this is actually L4, uh, not that that's super important, but that's going to be supporting a lot more weight than, let's say, uh, C3, the cervical vertebra right here. Because the cervical vertebra is way higher up, and so it has to support less weight on top of it. Okay, So that's your body. Now again, back to anterior versus posterior. If the vertebral body is anterior, that means back here would be posterior. So let me angle this over here. This bony process that's angled backwards or posteriorly, this is the spinous process. Now, when we look at the spinous process in the lumbar vertebra, what we can see is that it's pretty much angled directly backwards. It has a slight amount of inferior tilt downwards. So if we imagine the body being kind of placed in a level fashion, we can see the, the spinous process, it goes backwards mostly, a little bit downwards, but for the most part, it's directly backwards. When we compare that to the thoracic vertebra, we can see that their spinous processes are angled much farther downward. So they're still posterior and they're still angled backwards, but they project much more inferiorly when we look at the thoracic vertebra. Okay? The other thing is if we look at the thoracic spinous process and the lumbar spinous process, okay, they're pretty much just one bony process. Okay? When we compare that to the cervical vertebra, what we can see is that the cervical vertebra has bifid spinous processes, or that's the tendency. So if we look at the spinous process, we actually see one going this direction, one branch of it, and one branch of it going this direction. So the cervical vertebra are going to have bifid spinous processes. We don't see that in the thoracic vertebra nor the lumbar vertebra. So that's anterior versus posterior. Okay, now left versus right. Well, if we want the vertebral body okay, to be anterior, okay, so if we're looking at it like this, we're looking at the front side of the body, this would be like you're looking at somebody's face, that would mean the patient's left is over on this side, patient's right is over here. Again, if we look at it from the back side, okay, you're looking at the person's back, this is right over here, and this is left over on this side. So actually being able to determine left and right in these vertebrae is extremely important. Because a lot of these structures, there's going to be two of them, bilateral, one on each side. Okay, so now that we've got the vertebral body here and gotten our bearings, pretty much everything posterior to the vertebral body, all of this right here is the vertebral arch. 
and we pretty much consider several things in it. One, the pedicle, which we'll explain these pieces in a minute. So we've got the pedicle. We've got these, which are called transverse processes. We've got the articular processes. We've got the lamina, and then the spinous process. So again, pretty much everything behind the vertebral body, all of this is considered the vertebral arch. All right, so let's take a look at the individual pieces of that. Now I'm actually going to turn this on its side a little bit so you can see it. Um, if we look kind of flanking the spinous process right here going in the back, we actually have two projections. One seems to be going upward, and the other seems to be going downward. So if we look at it, here's the one going upward, here's the one going downward. These are the superior and inferior articular processes respectively. Okay? So again, we're looking at the back here. This is the left side over here, patient's left. So this right here would actually be the left superior articular process. This down here is the left inferior articular process. Okay? And each of these is going to have two of each, two superior and two inferior. So going over to this side, we would have the right superior articular process, and this right here is the right inferior articular process. Right? Now when we look at the transverse process in the lumbar vertebra, they seem to project almost perpendicularly uh, with respect to the spinous process. So they're pretty much going out directly in the left and right lateral directions. When we compare that to the thoracic vertebra, they're, they're angled a little bit more posteriorly. Again, but those are going to be pretty simple to identify. So you should be able to identify this thing going down as the spinous process. And again, these are going to be the right and left transverse processes. Okay? Now again, this is also going to have superior and inferior articular processes. This one would actually be the left superior articular process. Down here would be the inferior articular process. And it's also worth mentioning that, let's say the inferior articular process of this vertebra will actually articulate, will form a joint with the superior articular process of the vertebra right beneath this. Okay? So this process is going to form a, a joint, it's called a facet joint actually, with the superior articular process of the vertebra beneath it. Vice versa, the superior articular process right here is going to form another joint that is a facet joint with the inferior articular process of the vertebra that sits on top of this one. Okay? So the key is, is that the superior articular processes are going to articulate with inferior articular processes of adjacent vertebrae. And those joints that are formed are what we call facet joints. Okay? And there's a left and right of each of those. Now if we look at the cervical vertebra, these also have superior and inferior articular processes. Again, this is posterior right here, so this is over on the patient's left side. Here's the left superior articular process. Here's the left inferior articular process. And what we notice here in the cervical vertebra is that these have much less well-defined, I should say, transverse processes. Now you can actually see the left transverse process right here. And what's actually unique about this one is that in the cervical vertebra, they actually have these holes right here. Notice in the lumbar vertebra and the thoracic vertebra that the uh, transverse processes do not have holes. Okay? That's only something that we see in the cervical vertebra. And these holes are what we call collectively transverse foramina. Okay? Um, and singularly, they would be a transverse foramen or foramen. So this one over here would be the left transverse foramen or foramen. All right? Now, while we're on this, uh, this giant hole right here in the center, this is the vertebral foramen or vertebral foramen. Okay? Now, this is the hole through which the spinal cord projects inferiorly. So we know that the spinal cord, part of the central nervous system, it's actually going to project through this hole. And if you imagine tons of vertebrae stacked on top of one another, you're basically going to have a large canal here formed by all these vertebral foramen called the vertebral canal. And the spinal cord is going to project downwards. Now, the way to think about the spinal cord is as it projects inferiorly, it's going to be thinning out. So the top of the spinal cord, closer to your medulla oblongata, or the brain stem, that's going to be the thickest part of the spinal cord, generally speaking. But near the bottom, overall, it's going to be quite a bit thinner. 
And the reason for that is because as spinal nerves exit the spinal cord, they're taking more and more neurons away from it. And so progressively the spinal cord gets thinner as you go down. And so what you'll notice with, with the cervical vertebra is the vertebral foramen's fairly large. If we look here at the lumbar vertebra, what we see is that this vertebral foramen is actually pretty small relative to what we saw for the cervical region. Now technically this is L4 and the spinal cord does not extend that far down. It actually terminates somewhere around L1 and L2. But if this was actually the L1 vertebra, we would also see a fairly small hole there as well. If we look at the thoracic one, we see that it's actually more or less intermediate in size. Okay, so let's actually zoom in a little bit more. But we see that it's certainly not as large as for the cervical vertebra. Okay, all right. A few other structures to look at. One is what's called the pedicle. Now the pedicle is the region coming directly off of the vertebral body and pretty much going all the way up until you get to this level of the transverse process. So this region right here, this would actually be the patient's left pedicle. Over here would be the right pedicle, all right? Now, if we look at the region coming off of where the spinous process is, so this arch region right here, okay, this would be the lamina. So this is the left lamina. This one over here would be the right lamina. So the lamina is the region, pretty much this arch flanking uh, the origin right here of the spinous process. Okay? And pretty much at the junction here of the lamina, where it meets up with the pedicle, that's pretty much where the transverse process is going to come off and project laterally. Right? Now a few other things here. Um, one, if you look at this arch right here, Okay, this arch is what we call the inferior vertebral notch. Inferior vertebral notch. Now, the one up top here, which looks to be smaller, is the superior vertebral notch. Now, before we go into what they are, I just want to mention that always what we're going to see is the inferior vertebral notch is larger than the superior one. This is consistent if we look at the thoracic vertebra. Okay, uh, Line it up just right. We can see that this notch kind of projects a lot more upward. This is the inferior vertebral notch, larger than the uh, superior vertebral notch, right? So if we look here at this left vertebral notch, this is gonna be formed by the junction between the left aspect of the vertebral body down here and the left inferior articular process, okay? Likewise, if we look at the left superior vertebral notch. This is going to be formed by the junction between the left aspect, again up here of the vertebral body, and the left superior articular process. Okay, And so each one of these notches is formed by the vertebral body and the corresponding articular process, whether it be superior or inferior. And again, you have the same thing here on the patient's right side. Okay. We can play the same game with that with the thoracic vertebra as well. Okay. And also we can again do this with the cervical vertebra. Right here you actually see here the inferior vertebral notch. Here's the superior vertebral notch over there. Okay. Same kind of thing okay. except that the cervical vertebra look quite a bit different. Okay. And so really to conclude, if I had to sum up some of the big important structures that we have here on a general vertebra, we have the vertebral body right here. Everything posterior to the vertebral body, all this is the vertebral arch. Coming directly off of the body, we have the pedicles. Projecting posteriorly, we have the spinous process. Projecting laterally, kind of near the pedicles, we have the transverse processes. Remember that the cervical vertebra also have those transverse foramina, okay, one on each side. Projecting away from the spinous processes right here, we have the lamina. Okay, there's a left lamina on this side, right on this side. The lamina are going to kind of intersect with the pedicles at the level where the transverse processes project laterally. And then, of course, on each side, we're going to have a superior articular process and an inferior articular process. And then we have those notches, the superior vertebral notch and the inferior vertebral notch. And then, of course, we have the vertebral foramen right down here in the center. And again, technically the spinal cord doesn't run down through L4, but if we were considering L1 or pretty much any one of these vertebrae above it, uh, the spinal cord would actually run through that hole. And collectively, these holes or vertebral foramens uh, would actually be the vertebral canal. Okay. 
So hopefully this video made sense and you learned a lot about the various parts, general parts of vertebrae. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.